God be the glory for the things he has done. He has done great things for us. And for that, we all can say hallelujah and thank God for saving us. To our officers, to our ministers, to our mothers, to uh, our brotherhood president tonight, Deacon Dwayne Chote, and our WMU president, Sister Angela Huntley, and to each of you, my father's children. Thank you and welcome for allowing us this time in sharing in the word of God, training, Bible study, discipleship. It is a blessing to be able to uh, study the word of God. How, how blessed we are that we can share his truth. Uh, as we enter into this lesson tonight, we pray that, uh, that, that you will share this uh, invitation, whether it be on Zoom, Facebook, or on conference call. Invite, invite your family, invite your friends into this sacred time of study of what thus saith the Lord. As we open in prayer, ask you all to come with us as we enter into the throne room and petition the presence of God. Master, we come thankful for another opportunity. We come thankful for another privilege to study your word. Pray that you will speak to our hearts tonight that you will open our eyes and open our understanding that we'll be able to gain insight because your word gives specificity as to our focus and to our duties and to what you uh, require that we do. Not to be saved, but because we are saved. Thank you now. Bless your word. We'll give you glory, honor, and praise. Strong name of he who died, but yet still lives. Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Tonight. Tonight is a good lesson. Tonight is a Good lesson tonight. Good lesson tonight. We want to be able to study the word of God. Amen. We want to be able to study the word of God. I think I asked you to start your video, Sister Williams. There you go. Cut your, cut your uh, microphone off, Sister Williams, if you could. Thank you. Thank you. July 18 of 2021. The, the title of our lesson tonight is The Golden Rule. The Golden Rule. Wonderful. The Golden Rule. Scriptures in Matthew 7th chapter and we began to uh, read at verse number 12. It is a good passage. It is a great passage for daily living. Matthew 7, verse 12 says, Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. Amen. Uh, for this is the law and 
the prophets. Let me read that again. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So reads the word of God. This, my brothers and sisters, is what we call the golden rule. The lesson of the brotherhood uh, gives inference that it really provides guidelines for the Christian living because it honestly, truly is rooted in love. In fact, all of God's word is based on love, love for God who provides for our needs who, and who loves us without limits. And then also love for our neighbors as well as for our family. Love even for our enemies. Love for others who are made in God's own image. The lesson says, when we examine the word of God, we learn that God's primary objective is to love for his entire creation. That's, that's, that's the guideline for Christian living. We should love God and his creation as much as God loves them. When we do this, then the golden rule is easily demonstrated in all that we do. When what we do is not based on love, then the balance is off and chaos reigns. The golden rule is based upon reciprocal or mutual relationships, love for one another. I love you as much as I love me, and you love me as much as you love yourself. This is love without checks and balances as seeing who is producing the most love. With the golden rule, we are able to reach this type of reciprocal relationship. The golden rule calls for us to treat others as we desire to be treated. There's no worse feeling than, than, than treating someone with kindness and, and, and compassion only to be treated in a lesser manner. And you know we all have experienced times when we have faced mistreatment by someone. We, 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 somebody who we shouldn't have been kind to. It leads to all kinds of bad feelings and even resentment. The golden rule should be easy for all of us to remember that we should treat others in the same way that we wish to be treated. If we all practice this, there would be less chaos and more peaceful interactions among all people. The golden rule. This is the lesson before you as we look at the passage, we understand the dynamics of this passage of scripture where Jesus is uh, preaching his sermon on the mount. He is declaring the interactions 
uh, between men, uh, between each other. And he's, he's, he's asking us, he's commanding us, he's telling us how we are to move and treat one another. Man's biggest problem is there's too many uh, scales, there's too many rules, there's too many uh, foundations already established of how we ought to think about treating one another. For instance, the prejudiced person thinks they are treating you properly even though they are spewing hatred. The, uh, the rich give off the idea they need to be treated with royalty. And when you don't treat them to that level, then they're ready to cut you off. But the golden rule says that we all treat each other the same way. Rich, poor, black, white, whatever the situation is, we all are children of God. And this principle, many uh, people outside the parameter of the body of Christ um, come up with uh, that this is just common sense. This is something that men just do automatically. Well, Hillel, which was the Hebrew rabbi, he wrote a saying that was close to Jesus. What he said was, do not do to thy neighbor what is hateful to thyself. And then even the great Greek uh, philosopher Socrates, he said, what stirs your anger when done to you by others, that do not to others. But all of those words, though they are similar to this, they're not the same. Halil and uh, Socrates' words were predicated upon the rules that are negative and passive. Whereas Jesus' rule is positive and active. Jesus is, is positive and active. In essence, uh, Halil and Socrates say that avoid doing to others what you do not want done to you. But then Jesus' words in the golden rule says, think of something good you wish someone would do to you, then do it to someone else. That's a, that's a golden rule. Let's, let's explore the practice. Let's explore the practice. This, this is a, as we think about it, this isn't a simple uh, formula. Even a child comprehends. They hand each other toys because they expect that person to hand them back something else. That's a, that's a general principle. And it's, it's, it's hard, it's easy to comprehend, it's, but it's so hard to do. Because we live in an age of excess. We live in an age of indulgence. We live in an age of greed. There are more millionaires and billionaires now than ever before who have amassed so much money that they will not be able to spend it in a lifetime. But they know the principle, but because we are, our society is based upon greed and indulgence, they can see folks starving in Africa. They can see children dying of starvation all around the world and yet do nothing 
about it. Yes, it's a it's a easy to, easily understood principle, but it's something that's seldom done. It, it, children can do it. We show sure enough ought to do it. My, Micah six and eight says he hath showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Okay, you don't believe that one. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Once we explore that practice, we understand that it's something that is expectation to perform. That there's an expectation to perform. That all, do therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. It, it, it's evident. That the Lord desires each of us to do what he has commanded. It, it's, not a, it's, it's not enough to know what the Bible teaches. We've got to be willing to put those teachings into everyday practice. We must walk as a witness. The, 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 in essence, this principle cannot be separated from obedience to God. When the, old be when the golden rule is lived out in our lives, we are really showing the love of God to others. Everybody can see that God is working in our lives. You, you and, and brothers and sisters, you or I cannot please our Savior and we are unwilling to love our neighbor. You, you, you're, not, you're not doing anything if you love God whom you have not seen. But yet you hate your brother who you see every day. You are a lie and the truth ain't in you. The Lord is telling us he expects us to love everybody. There's an expectation that God has placed in your life. There's an expectation that God had, has, 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 uh, expects in all of our life. He, you've explored the practice. He expects you to perform. Matthew 22 and 37, 38 and 39 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt... Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Yes, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See, the first thing is love of God. Secondly, love of our neighbor. Third is love of self. This day and age, we have reversed the order. We have self-love. Then we will love our neighbor and don't have love for our God. We have a right, that God has a right, I should say, to expect us to perform the golden rule. Galatians 5.14, for all of the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Even though we are surrounded by those who are unworthy and undeserving and too filthy to be a recipient of our love. They've been backstabbers. They've been, they've been name droppers. They've been calling you everything. But you got to remember that even though they are around us, 
what, think about where you would be if God had turned his back on you because of your unworthiness, because of our undeserving, because of our mean spirit, because of our tongue lashing. What would, what would Jesus have done? What, what would they thought of Jesus if he would have not said while they nailed his hand? while they riveted his feet, while they pierced him in the side, crowned his head. What, what if he would not have said, Father, forgive, he had every right to reject them, to cast them asunder. But he says, what you've seen me do, you go and do likewise. I know, I know, it's tough. I know, I, I know it's tough. But the Lord expects you and I to perform the golden rule. Explore the practice, expectation to perform. But there ought to be an empathetic premise. The empathetic premise is you can't look at this teaching or any teaching that Christ has spoken place before us without having an empathetic premise. You have to have compassion in your heart to see the needs of others. You have to have compassion of spirit in order for you to help fulfill the needs of others. And we all have had occasions in our life where we just simply wanted somebody to just feel what I feel, just be sympathetic to my need, just, just at least give me a moment to grieve, yeah. give me a moment to cry. Yeah, you know, you, you, we, we, we should never be so brash or so impulsive that we ready to tell somebody you, if you're crying you sinning or if you're doing this you please be sympathetic show sympathy everybody ain't you and everybody don't grieve like you everybody don't get over a situation as quickly as you stop thinking people can read your mind stop Thinking that people ought to know better. That's the one that gets us. We go to thinking. They've been in church all this time. They've been around you all this time. They ought to know you. They ought to know what you expect. You ought to have the right. No, be sympathetic. You don't know what somebody is going through. Learn how to offer Compassion, a harsh word can't win nobody. But love can. Amen. Amen. A harsh word will turn someone, I hate to say this, not only against you, but against your God. So you got to be able to have empathy, empathize, have sympathy for others, have an empathetic premise. It ought to be based upon compassion. Be based upon love. Not only explore the practice and expectation to perform and let have an empathetic premise, but we ought to exercise our profession. He says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even. See, this is not a negative command or a passive command. This is a positive and an active command. It involves more than simply not doing wrong. It, it involves more than just doing good. 
It involves more than not doing wrong, and it involves more than just doing good. Yes, we ought to do good at every opportunity. The command of the Lord is that we take it a step further. This actually requires that we seek to do good to somebody else. The idea is looking, seeking, searching for an opportunity to do good for other people. See, it's going out of our way to be kind and compassionate. Most believers now only witness to those they, people they bump into. Those people who are saved now only feed those who they see on a daily basis. No, this command says go seek them, go look for them, expect somebody to be helped. Can I just tell you what Romans 15 and 1 and 2 says? We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. That isn't being kind when it is convenient or when others are kind to us. It is actually seeking ways to treat others in a Christ-like manner. Ain't that wonderful? You ought to be able to exercise your profession. Look for somebody to do good to. And there's enough bad out in the world, out in America, out in California, out in the county of Monterey, all across the city of Seaside and in the Friendship Baptist Church. There are folk that you need to seek out who need to feel the golden rule and experience it from you that they will be able to express it to somebody else. Amen, amen. Exercise your profession. Stop being a gym rat. Go outside and do your good deed. Do your deed among men who don't know Jesus. Those who really need some help. Yes, explore the practice, expectation to perform, empathetic premise, exercise our profession, and then we need to envelop the parameters, the enveloping of the parameters. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men would do, do ye so to them. This uh, would have been uh, easier to fulfill if the Lord would have commanded this behavior in some things, in, in, in good things, or even in most things. But Jesus commanded us to do these in all things. He has not offered an option or a conditional requirement, but a continual command in every circumstance we face. In other words, how often do we snap back at somebody who was rude? Oh, and don't drive in front of us on a highway. Cut us off. You cut us off on the highway, we're ready to cut you right back off. And then pump our brakes to make sure we trying to get even with you. I wish I had a witness. No eye rolling. No eye rolling. <laughs> we got to learn how to look for somebody to say, no, I'm going to envelop the parameters. I'm going to exercise it to everyone who's even mean to me. See, our, our human nature is to get even, to get back, to make you hurt like we hurt. 
to make you feel cut up like we feel, to make you feel as small as you made us feel. But the idea of the believer in response to the golden rule is that we demonstrate kindness and compassion and love even to the undeserving. Everyone, it's an enveloping parameter. It covers all issues, haters, enemies, those who despise you, them who talked about your children, them who ran down your school, them who talked about your house. Everybody, those who mistreated you. And ain't nothing worse than somebody stepping on your manhood, running down your name, you, you, make, making you feel that you all that. Well, the truth is, you ain't nothing no way. We all are no more than a vapor, a puff almost ready to die at any instant. So in every issue, in every circumstance, we ought to keep in mind, whatever it is, I've got to demonstrate the golden rule. I've got to be able to show the world who Jesus Christ is. I've got to look out for somebody that I can show Jesus to. Go out my way to go and show them how much love Jesus has. And they won't see it unless they see it in you and I. And they don't only see it uh, when circumstances come, but they best see it when you go out your way to find them, to show them Jesus loves even you. Yes, yes. Explore the practice. Expectation to perform empathetic premise. Exercise our profession. Enveloping of the parameters. But lastly, the equalizer for our problems. I'm sorry, I didn't get that one. Huh? All right, I didn't get that one to you, but I'm giving it to you now the equalizer for our problems. How do I, I need help? How do I stop cutting folk off who cut me off on the highway? How do I stop cussing out the cashier who works for one person quicker than they wanted to work for me? How do I respond when somebody treated me so cruelly? It's difficult, Reverend. It's difficult, Reverend. It's difficult, Reverend, for me to be able to reach out to those who don't want to be fine. It's difficult for me to love the unlovable, the equalizer for the problem. The equalizer for the problems is, is, is purely this. It, you, you must remember that Jesus always had skeptics. Jesus was surrounded with haters. Don't, don't think it's strange because everybody around you is a hater. Don't, don't, no, no. You got to learn how to stop letting haters uh, tear you down. And let haters be your motivators. Folk will hate you so much and hate so much on you that before you know it, you'll be doing everything to avoid them just to keep from cussing them out. To avoid them just to keep from slapping them one good time. The Lord gave you the equalizer for the problem. And that equalizer for the problem is the word of God. The Bible. The Bible. The Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. Listen, when you read the word and you study the word, you will find treasures. You will find nuggets. You will find strength. You will find stability on shaky ground. And every time you are ready to 
increase somebody's ugliness. Every time you are ready to cut somebody up with your tongue. Every time you're ready to roll your eyes at somebody until their eyes hurt themselves. Every time the Lord wants you to reflect on the word. I don't care what they've done. I don't care who it is. Don't put classes on certain people that when they reach this limit, they've gone as far as they can. Don't, don't, don't put jackets on people that you won't go the next level or the next step. Have everybody equal. It ought to be the same. The word will help you not pe put people in classes. The word will let you know that all men are sinners. And there are none uh, righteous. No, not one. There are none. And so you have to remember that it's upon you to turn to the equalizer. God's word conform confirms this principle of the golden rule. And when we study the word, it conforms our life to the, to the teachings. It confirms the golden rule, and then the golden rule conforms us. You won't be molded by societal thinking. You, won't, you, you can't be framed by what you see on Fox TV. You cannot uh, become foundationally based upon something that you read in a book other than the Word of God. Only the Word of God is inerrant has no errors. It is perfect in its penmanship. It is directional and it motivates every reader. Whoever's saved, the Holy Spirit will give you insight and you'll be able to hold up the blood-stained banner. So never, never forget, your equalizer is the word of God. Any, any time uh, the word of God is taught, preached, you ought to be in attendance at your church. Any time the word of God. J James, the brother of Jesus, said in the second chapter, verse number eight, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. <laughs> right there. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes, Ye do well. See the fulfilling of the scripture. The word. The equalizer. The equalizer will balance you. you it will stabilize you. you. The word of God will give you premise. It will give you power. It will it'll, it'll, it'll produce in you the fruit of the spirit when you realize that the what the word of God says in this instance love your enemy you and I the world says hate your enemy love your friend the word says love your enemy society says cut those that cut you but the word of God says uh, uh, those that you are to love are not the one that treats you well. But you honestly are supposed to love those who despitefully mistreat you. Uh -huh. Treat you bad. Love them. Run you down. Love them. Purposefully pain your heart. Love them. Amen. They know they can do better. Love them. Amen. I know those are some hard things. But the Lord has you as an example Amen. of who he is you, as you exercise the golden rule. You, do good to those that despitefully mistreat you. Do, do good to them. Do good. Love them even though they are unlovable. And you and I can remember the time 
when we were unlovable ourselves. All we wanted was somebody to just encourage us. Amen. Just tell us, tell us, you can make it. Just, just wipe the, help wipe the tear rather than give us more reason to shed tears. Love us. The golden rule is presented to you today. Thank God for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for your truth. Thank you for the principles um, taught out, brought out tonight, taught in your word. We pray, Master, that we will become impacted by this golden rule. Yes, sir. And we'll not only be worshipers, but we will be witnesses in a wayward and crooked, crooked world. Help us, oh God, to show this world that you really have made a change in our lives and it's demonstrated by our exercise of the golden rule. Bless us, oh God, to love our enemies. Help us to find strength in your word. Bless us to be sustained by your Holy Spirit. And then God, let our actions speak volumes of you in our lives that somebody will be saved by what we do. Thank you for all of your many blessings. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, work on us. Work on us. Work on us. Whatever's in us that's not like you, work on us. Fix it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. We love you one and all on Facebook, on Zoom, and on conference call. Y'all be blessed. We'll see you on tomorrow night if the Lord says the same. Bye-bye. Go with God and go in peace.